Welcome everybody. This is the uh, sprint demo for the team at Evernim responsible for our contributions to Indian Sovereign. And it is January 31st, 2019. And this is our 2019. And we've got a uh, we're going to do a demo today of uh, the work we've done. Most of that work is around finally releasing our collection stuff. That is the user facing portion of a number of architecture items we have to take care of. So uh, we're excited about that. So quick look at the sprints this, this round. Um, on the SDK side, we uh, did a lot of uh, planning for agent-to-agent -agent compatibility. Uh, we got that done. Uh, we got the 1.8 release out with the freshness fixes, and we did a number of bug fixes. So pretty happy about that. Uh, on the node side, we did a lot of bug fixes on the node side. Uh, completed the work that was uh, identified during the outage we had on the Sovereign mainnet. Uh, we had two, an outage, brief one in January, a long one in December. So we fixed a number of those items that, that we identified, and we also worked on improving the, the way plug work, uh, the request handler works. That work is not complete yet, uh, so it's not going to be released for a couple more months. Um, so that's the work we did. So with that, I'll stop sharing my screen, and I'll let Alex uh, explain a bit more about freshness and, and why, why it's useful. Are you on, Alex? Yeah, uh, thank you. Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, good. Yeah, so uh, this prints, uh, we finished a couple of stories uh, related to freshness. Uh, so let me start uh, with description, uh, what is freshness, why it's uh, uh, important feature. So uh, one of the fields in every get request to the ledger, one of the important fields is the last uh, update time of uh, this ledger of the state. And uh, it's important, it's required uh, to know uh, what is the value of this last update time just in order to see if uh, the data returned uh, from a node is fresh enough. And well, it's important because uh, because of BLS multi-signature, we can send a read request to just one node and get a reply to one node. So let's assume that uh, we send a request to node A and we got a reply from node A and in reply we see that the last update, uh, the timestamp for this reply is 7 a.m. But the current time, uh, the client sees that the current time is 10 a.m. So uh, before the freshness uh, fixes, it was not clear uh, whether the last update time is seven and not 10 uh, because uh, the node A is out of date or uh, because uh, the pool uh, haven't been ordered, uh, haven't been written anything for three hours. So it could be, in the first case, we would need maybe to ask another node, which is not out of date. Uh, in the second case, that's fine. It's the latest data, but we just cannot prove it. Uh, so, uh, the issue that I just described, it wasn't so reproducible with the regular load. So we have a permanent load in the system so that we uh, write at 10 a.m., uh, we read at 10 a.m., so we get, like the last update was at 10. Then we write, send a write request at 10.20, and if you send read, it will return us 10.20, so that's fine, and so on. So if you have uh, frequent writes, uh, the state will be updated, so uh, they're not such a big problem. But if uh, the writes to the ledger are not so often, so let's uh, assume that uh, we had just one write at 10 a.m. and then we started to send read requests, it will always return uh, that the last update time is 10 a.m. And you can see here on the timeline, on this point, it's totally not clear if it's just out of date, uh, out of dated note or if the pool really uh, haven't been ordered uh, anything. And it's worth pointing out that in the adoption curve of the sovereign network, that's where we are today. Yeah, but, so that was before the freshness fixes. But uh, yes. now the current master and the next stable release, next sprint, it will contain the freshness fixes. Uh, and uh, with uh, these fixes, the situation uh, will be different. Even though uh, we send just uh, one write request at 10 a.m. And if we send uh, like reads every five or like 
any uh, any read request, it will return uh, up to date time because uh, the pool will update its freshness. So even for example at noon we send a read request, uh, it will not uh, return us not noon, but if if at uh, ten twenty we send a read request, it will return us something around ten twenty and not ten a.m because of this feature. And important to say that this is uh, update time is done for every ledger. So regardless of this, if this is a node ledger or config ledger or uh, payment or uh, domain, uh, the state will be updated. So uh, after this fix, uh, we can be sure that the uh, time that uh, we got from the ledger is uh, really up to date and we can decide if the node is out of date. So we need to resend request to another node or uh, that's really okay for us. Uh, a couple of words on uh, how it's uh, implemented. So uh, actually we just leverage existing uh, three-phase commit protocol and uh, uh, the primary node. Uh, this is a, uh, a noun uh, picture from our three-phase commit in RBFT. Uh, a primary node, which is responsible for sending, uh, for ordering, start ordering requests, it just sends, uh, it just ch it, uh, checks uh, if uh, the state is up to date. And if it sees that the state wasn't updated for more than five uh, minutes, it's configurable parameter, now it's five minutes, then it sends a pre-prepare as usual, a pre-prepare as usual, but with no requests. This pre-prepare uh, goes through all uh, common uh, prepare and commit states, through all the common three-phase commit states, and uh, uh, it gets ordered eventually. Uh, by, uh, during this phase, of course, the BLS multi-signature is created uh, and uh, the new updated timestamp is signed by BLS by every, every node. So once uh, this pre-prepare with no requests uh, is ordered, it updates eventually uh, last update time uh, of, the, of a ledger. And uh, it's done for every ledger for which uh, primary sees that uh, the ledger is out of date. Okay, uh, well, this is uh, one of the tests. So, so we have a number of unit and integration tests for this. So you can see that uh, here we just, we don't uh, order any requests. We don't order any requests. Here we just check uh, that the freshness was eventually updated for all, uh, for all ledgers. Then we wait for some time, like the freshness timeout, five seconds. And then we check uh, that the freshness was again uh, updated for all the ledgers. So that the timestamp uh, is updated and then the uh, values are uh, different. So sorry, the values are the same, but the time is uh, updated. Uh, and uh, so we made sure that it works for both uh, core code and also it works for uh, our uh, plugins that can introduce uh, new ledgers and can also uh, update uh, the state. So that's all. Well, the test may take some time, but yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Alex. So next is Vladimir. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, let me share my screen. Mm. Uh, I have a pool um, uh, that uh, was started uh, about uh, 30 minutes ago. And uh, now we, um, at this version of pool, we have a freshness feature that uh, can be showed uh, using validator info tool uh, in the terminal. Uh, like you can see um, on my screen. So we see that last updated time uh, uh, less than um, each node uptime and uh, it uh, always will be in uh, five minutes from current moment. And also we can check the freshness um, using uh, um, Indy CLI. So um, uh, also, we can use uh, not only a trusty or steward role for this, but now we can use uh, our new role network monitor. So I have um, this uh, mm, 
uh, this user uh, user with this role in my uh, wallet. So now I can just type uh, ledger get validator info. And um, I uh, mm, get the output. Uh, so I just uh, mm, I will just find a node info section and uh, we can see mm, freshness status here. Uh, so uh, it it is uh, uh, UTC time, so we can see that uh, 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 the last updated time is in five minutes from current moment. So we uh, pull uh, ha, uh, pool has a, a right consensus, and last update time uh, less than three minutes from current moment since now uh, seventeen. 44 uh, in uh, Moscow time. So uh, we can convert it to UTC by uh, it's minus three hour. So we have uh, freshness information uh, in validator info, both validator info. So we can uh, check this uh, using Indie CLI or our terminal tool for monitoring. So that's all from me. Excellent. And, and now that the network monitor role is available, stewards shouldn't need to put their their steward DID into automated test scripts, but it can instead can use a, a network monitor role uh, when they need to do monitoring and check the last consensus time. So. Yes, exactly. So, and this role, um, mm, cannot uh, perform uh, some other operations except of uh, get validator info. Perfect. Thank you very much, Vladimir. And then Nikita was going to explain how freshness is supported in the SDK. Yeah, so it's the, uh, the last portion of freshness changes in the, and it's an SDK. So what we introduced is a limit uh, for requests. Not right now, uh, requests uh, that are older uh, with a, a BLS signature older than 600 sections are uh, even with the correct state proof are uh, cons uh, considered as not fresh and uh, they are they will be uh, collected only on a consensus base so they won't be passed as a regular state proof uh, so we implemented a couple of tests that uh, uh, that uh, um, shows the behavior. So here we can see uh, we, are, we are sending the first message with uh, uh, <coughs> with, a, uh, with a state proof with a timestamp that are like uh, 700 seconds old. So it's more than 10 minutes. And it's considered not fresh. And so after that request, even with the correct state proof, we are uh, we are receiving is state uh, the uh, our pool uh, this request uh, still on collection consensus, and if we send like a fresh request, so with like, with the three hundred seconds old BLS signature, it will be considered is as a finished request, and this response will be uh, will be collected and get back got back to the user. I'll show I'll show in the code right now. Um, where is that? Oh, give me a second. One, two, three. Here it is. Here it is. So this is the check in the code. So we have, have a threshold, which is default, uh, which defaults to six hundred, and and then uh, is we just checking current time with the last write time that was fetched from the request. And that's it for SDK, and I sh uh, stop sharing it. Excellent. So it's really important that people recognize that the uh, the sovereign ledger, the sovereign network, people are playing with that. Uh, it's not going to be updated to the latest release of Indie Node for some time. 
uh, it goes through an approval process and testing. So after any note is released, which that release is still a week away, uh, there's still a period of time before it gets updated. So it's not going to be reporting the freshness information that the SDK is checking for. So people who want to use the latest SDK, the 1.8 release that Arjun is going to talk about in a minute, they need to make sure to configure that press threshold to be really big so that the current MB node, uh, so that the current sovereign network doesn't, doesn't, so that the SDK doesn't pause waiting for the current sovereign network to return that value. Is that a good way to describe that, Sergey? Yeah. So it's maybe not so critical, but without this configuration, response time may be twice or four, four times more than right now. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Artem is now gonna talk about the release. Hello, everyone. Uh, I would like to announce that uh, in this decade release 180 almost done. Uh, now our QA team performs validation of release candidate and I think in nearest future uh, our CD pipeline building process will be started and the Bindi stable version will be available soon. Uh, now I would like to look into our change log uh, we have for this release. Uh, I'd like to first uh, highlight uh, it contains uh, two points which already has been marked from uh, Vladimir like network monitor role and uh, uh, filtering of our data response from Nikita. Uh, and also I'd like to pay attention for some other points like the Bindi uh, improvements of error handling. I uh, used to the Bindi return only error code uh, and only way to get additional information what actually went wrong was uh, enabling loading. Uh, but now uh, we extended our API and uh, there's a way to get additional error message and backtrace. Uh, this describes these three points from our change log. Uh, all required work in wrappers in CLI already done and uh, now we leave quick easy. Uh, also, I would like to pay attention for uh, new pack and pack functions. Now, the, that function in experimental state, uh, this function was uh, were added to support uh, wire messages. Uh, now, a team working on migration to new agent-to-agent uh, -agent protocol. Uh, this function uh, are really powerful, useful for this protocol. Uh, I would like to notice that Indian and encrypt and decrypt function were marked as deprecated be because actually pack and pack function in some combination of parameters uh, does actually the same work as this unencrypt and decrypt function. Uh, also, uh, we have removed bind again folder from Node.js wrapper because uh, this folder uh, was actually useful during initial development of Node.js wrapper, but now it's almost duplicate the code uh, by, uh, in source folder based on this uh, runs all our tests and builds Node, uh, Node.js artifact. So this folder is now actually useless uh, and to avoid twice work, we deleted the folder completely. Uh, also, the uh, one eight release includes some uh, important bug fixes and not really. Uh, that's it. And uh, you were mentioning the pack unpack. Uh, do, P do users of the SDK 1.8 need to make code changes to use the new pack unpack? Or is that all? Is that all handled under the covers so they don't have to worry about changes? Uh, could you please repeat? To use the new pack unpack, you mentioned that it replaces the Indie Crypto and non cred crypts and decrypt. Yeah. Uh, is a user of the SDK? If I'm writing out an application using the SDK, do I have to change my code? to use the new pack unpack instead of the any crypto and non crypt and decrypt? Or is that under the, is that a lower layer and I don't have to make any changes? Uh, yes, uh, we should use pack unpack as a signature actually really similar. And the only thing we need to do is uh, change function name if we used to use. Okay, so the behavior's pretty much the same, but the, uh, the, uh, yes, yes. But I do have to make a change and recompile. Yes, we have to do. Okay. 
good to understand. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that, Artem. Did anybody else have any questions about the release? Okay. Um, let me share my screen then. But, uh, okay. So, the next couple, uh, let's look really quick at what the next sprint is going to be. Um, moving things out of the way. Okay. So on the any node side, uh, our goal is to, we're going to get that January release out with 1683 that has the, the freshness in it. And then again, we're, we're focused on bug fixes. So there's a number of bug fixes we've identified that need to happen. Uh, also, we're starting the audit ledger. We've mentioned this work before that in order to ensure consistency between the various ledgers, we need to introduce an audit ledger that orders, uh, stores the, the order of all the, all of all the ledgers. So the catch up happens in a predictable way that will allow us in the future to move all permissions to the config ledger and, uh, which is the next batch of work. So once we, release that multi-signature support and moving permissions to the config ledger, those permission definitions. We want to work on fully qualified DIDs and then get back to completing that work with the pluggable request handler to make sure it's, it's efficient and reliable. So it's, that gives us the following release plan based on our team sizing. Now, of course, we need to coordinate this release with other members of the Indy community. But uh, we will probably hit uh, mid-March for, you know, the, the release for the middle of will take another week. Uh, then it'll take us a little more than a month probably to complete that, complete that audit ledger. So hit mid-March for that release. Then in April, we'll get the, the multi-sig out and the config ledger piece out. And then the plugin handler. Now, there's a question about whether the fully qualified DIDs, whether it'll fit in April or in May. Uh, that's the question, but the, the plugin handler is the focus for that main release. So on the SDK side, we are all about agent compatibility. So we're working on that this spring, uh, probably the next spring as well. There is a sovereign agent connectathon in mid February that we're going to be attending. Half our team will, will be there. So the next sprint is going to be going to be smaller. Once that's done, then we're into uh, back to improving the VCX library. Uh, we, we've been talking about some architectural changes, perhaps combining libvcx with libindy and making it more of a namespace or a or a package uh, a package name, but a single binary. That hasn't uh, we haven't shared that. It's a proposal. We like your feedback. Uh, we haven't. Uh, discuss that with all the architects in the community to, to get approval to move that way. But that's what we're thinking of. And that, that'll simplify some of the build pipeline stuff and help us with some of the addition, some of the future VCX work. I should also mention that we're, we need to improve the integration test coverage for the VCX API. So we're, we're working on that. So that gives us a, is a release plan on the SDK. It's not quite as well defined because we don't know how long the agent to agent compatibility is going to take. So we've got the existing, the 1.8 release we're pushing out right now. Then the agent to agent stuff is going to take however long it takes, uh, probably at least a month, probably even a little longer into mid February. And then uh, we want to work, work on improving the architecture of the claims exchange library so it's easier for people to adopt and more reliable. That is the plan. Any questions or feedback on the plan? Look at the participant list. Uh, so if, if you have feedback or questions, please reach out to us on Rocket Chat. It's uh, chat.com.